Don't forget folks, before we go any further, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, ring the bell, like the video and all that jibber jabber, and thank you very much for supporting Invincible Asia. Based on true historical events dating from 1701 to 1702, The Fall of Akko Castle is a stunning retelling of the 47 Ronin tale, probably better known in the West as the epic Swords of Vengeance. After Lord Sunuyoshi strips 48 samurai of their assets, and young swordsman Asano gets angered by court official Kira's insults, he attempts to vengefully kill him, but is quickly stopped in his actions. In doing so, Asano is sentenced to seppuku while his land and property are claimed by the shogunate, who goes on to abolish the Asano name. Upset by the outcome and unfair decisions made by the very lord they work for, Asano's 47 fellow samurai vow to take vengeance for him, patiently waiting a year to make their move. Eventually, the Akko samurai descend on the inn where Kira is staying, resulting in a brutal and bloody battle that sees Kira sliced down. While seen as heroes to many, the 47 ronin are all sentenced to seppuku like their brother, this time with the shogunate choosing to abolish the name of Kira instead. It's no secret that the tale of the 47 ronin has been adapted for television and cinema many times over the years, with the first being made in the second decade of the early 1900s. But perhaps it would be the 1941 epic two-part feature from director Kenji Mizoguchi called Genroko Chusengora, or The 47 Ronin, that comes to people's minds first, or more so, Hiroshi and Igaki's version from 1962 that gained more attention in the West. Of course, more would soon follow, including the fall of Akko Castle and a host of long-running television shows, with Hollywood eventually making their own attempts, such as the hugely underrated Keanu Reeves fantasy adaptation, 47 Ronin, and even The Last Nights, with Morgan Freeman and Clive Owen, which was loosely based on the story and helmed by artistic director Kazuaki Korea, the same man behind the ultra-stylish Kasern and Goemon movies. The Fall of Akko Castle is directed by the late and legendary Kenji Fukusaku, one of Japan's biggest directors who was known for his wide range of genre pieces, from gritty Yakuza thrillers to stylish samurai dramas, and even sci-fi action with films such as Message from Space and Virus. Of course, for those uninitiated into the world of Japanese cinema, he would be most recognised in the West for bringing the hugely successful and brutal battle royale to the world, his final full feature before passing during the production of its sequel. Here, Kinji delivers a stunning slice of samurai cinema crammed with powerful performances from everyone involved, blindingly fast swordplay and filing clashes, and plenty of gorgeous cinematography, courtesy of Yoshio Miyajima, which would buy him an Academy Award nomination for his efforts. Just prior to this, Kinji had also directed the amazing Shogun Samurai, the first of three traditional features that would see the great Sunny Shiba play the infamous Jubei, continuing the Chambara theme with Samurai Reincarnation, Legend of the Eight Samurai, and Sure Death 4, although none would quite offer the same dramatic impact as the fall of Akko Castle. Along with the great Sunny Shiba, Fukusaku delivers a stunning cast of competent performers, including the prolific Nakamura Kenosuke as leading man Oishi, Nobuo Kaniko, Hiroki Masukata, pop idol Tirohiku Sago as Osano, and a guest appearance by the amazing Toshiro Mifune, the legendary actor who had appeared in many other adaptations of the story throughout his career. Backed by a dramatic and memorable score by Kenji Fukusaku regular, composer Toshiaki Toshima, there's a lot to love in the fall of Akko Castle to keep viewers gripped without noticing its lengthy 158 minute running time pass. I've always felt that there was something incredibly special about this period of Japanese cinema, along with many before it and some after. And while we still get many great movies today from the land of the rising sun, it's only fair to say that they just don't make them like this anymore. <laughs>